This UCSD TV program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest programs. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. David Granite, and welcome to Health Matters. There's an important topic that we need to talk about today. It's a topic of depression, and it's one that's pretty serious, one that's very important, and one that touches millions of people every day right here in the United States. We brought on today an expert who we've had on many years ago, uh, and we were joking before the show that we've both gotten a little more gray and older. And, you have. Uh, oh, no, <laughs> I didn't you, say I, I did. Uh, this is uh, Dr. David Feifel. Uh, welcome, David. Thank you. Um, Dr. Feifel, <laughs> Dr. Feifel is a professor of psychiatry here at the University of California, San Diego, where he was also founder and director of the Center for Advanced Treatments for Mood and Anxiety Disorders, uh, which uh, is why you're here, because you are really just a... Um, one of the top experts on this. And, and I mentioned in the open to the show about the topic of depression, um, and it's real, but I'm not sure what, if everybody really understands what is depression. Right. I think, I, I, I think you make a good point. I think a lot of people, uh, when they, because, because we use the term depression in our, in our regular speech as a colloquial way of using it, I think sometimes people uh, fail to understand that that's not what we mean. We don't mean, you know, boy, uh, you, know, uh, you know, my team lost, I'm, dep I'm really depressed, depressed. today. You know? yeah. uh, we're talking about a brain disorder. Uh, we're talking about a condition where people, even you know, under, uh, under circumstances where they can recognize they have all the blessings and everything going well in their life, just have no desire to live. They can barely get out of bed in the worst ca kinds of situations. Uh, they, they, their, their, their reward centers in their brains are shut down so they can't really feel pleasure from things that may, they, they may have once really enjoyed and been passionate about. Everything seems to be flat and, and more so maybe even dark and painful to the point where imagine somebody uh, you know, overriding the, the most powerful instincts of survival to actually uh, uh, you know, have an instinct for the opposite, wanting to end their life. So that's, that, I, I hope that gives uh, everyone uh, watching a sense that, that this is really a disease, a powerful disease. This is not you know, you know, somebody who just doesn't understand uh, you know, how to be grateful for something. This is Our moods change, right? I mean, you mentioned if your team loses, I'm depressed. Right. Um, there are times when we're very sad and we feel bad. And, and that's not what we're talking about with depression. Um, and and um, when you go along that spectrum, what, what's changing? I mean, you know, the, 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 someone you knew passed away and you're sad, or so you get some bad news and you cry. But this is a, uh, the spectrum goes along there. How, what's going on that changes someone from the, 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 the typical swings that we get, or even the ones that are pretty bad when something bad happens, to depression? You know, the, our nervous system, it, you know, is, is is meant for us to kind of uh, you know deal with the vagaries of uh, of everyday life. And sometimes we're down and we're up, but you know, our nervous system kind of keeps us regulated. Uh, we keep going. We, we're generally resilient and, and bounce back. And we lose. We can lose, uh, you know, uh, people that, uh, that that we love very much, and and go through a period where we're really not functional. We're grieving, but. But the nervous system bounces back. With depression, um, you know, there's something dysfunctional and it doesn't bounce back. And people's nervous system are really shut down. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the normal uh, things that, uh, that, that the nervous system does, specifically the brain, I had mentioned before, you know, we have centers in our brain that allow us to feel joy and pleasure. Uh, they, they get activated when we're, when, when we're doing things that, that make us happy. Uh, and, in, and, and in depression, one of the things that happens, those just don't get activated. So things that uh, you know, are, are so powerful, things like food and sex, 
you know, are no longer of any interest to people. Those are, those are actually two of the criteria for depression is, you know, a, 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 a decreased uh, appetite and a decreased uh, interest in, in, in pleasurable things like sex. You know, things where, you know, being, being with your children or grandchildren, which, which for most people is a, is a powerful biological, you know, pleasure. Uh, you know, people in severe depression will just say, you know, I just, it doesn't, I'm not interested. I try to, in fact, I try to avoid uh, you know, uh, engaging other people because it is so it is so so challenging to be with other people and put on a mask. Uh, it's just it's it's just exhausting for them. They and, you know it, I, I see many many people who uh, you know aside from coming to see me and doing maybe the minimal they need to do spend all day in bed. Mm -hmm. I had one patient I, that I always remember who was a a, a very successful and very dynamic and lo beloved a high school teacher so. Uh, so so dynamic and popular that the, the the school had to held a lottery for kids to go into his class. Wow. He developed a depression, and when he, uh, and I saw him uh, three years into his depression, where he almost was was not able to take care of his own personal hygiene and stayed in bed. And he said to me, the, the greatest accomplishment that I think I've ever done in my life to this point was being able to stay alive the last three years because wow. every day he deals with uh, the thoughts of just ending this misery. So, you know, this is, David, this is how profoundly uh, pathological this state is. You know, it's not, it's not easy for, for average person who doesn't have the disease or, or, or live with somebody to, to recognize it because it's not like a broken arm or a diseased heart which we can wrap our, uh, our intellectual minds around. This is, this, is, uh, this, is, this is very alien for people unless they've been through it. So if someone gets to you, there are things that we're going to talk about that you have options to help and different mechanisms, but they have to get to you. If you're a loved one around someone like this, can they recognize this? How do they, how do they identify it? Who do they go to? How do they start the process of getting this person out of bed at least enough to get help? Well, hopefully they're, they're, they're getting help before they get to the point where, where they we're not able to get out of bed because that's a pretty advanced stage. So, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes significant others are, are, are the best at picking up uh, differences and sometimes it's very personal and people can feel it before anybody around them knows it. And it's just, it, it's just you know, the, the, you know, the common uh, uh, symptoms are, are things that I've already mentioned. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there, there's a kind of a, a flatness to, to things. People start to stop, stop uh, enjoying life. They stop wanting to, to uh, interact with other people. Uh, you know, they may start, uh, you know, uh, f having self-loathing uh, uh, feelings like they're worthless. So, so do they pick up the phone and, and, and call a psychiatrist? They go to their internist? Um, typically, Where do they start? The most, the, the, the most common thing is for them to bring it up to their family uh, uh, physician. Uh, and that's and that's where you know the, the the bulk the lion's share of depression is recognized, and and actually treated. Um, so if people you know uh, you know good family physician uh, you know is is is, is t attuned to uh, a patient's uh, uh, mental state because a lot of times um, it uh, it manifests as a physical problem. You know, uh, people will, uh, you know, people will have aches and pains that seem to have no organic basis. Um, um, they'll, they'll, they'll have palpitations that, uh, that you know, don't seem to be uh, uh, originating from their heart, but, you know, there's anxiety, you know, and they're not, it's, they have insomnia, they can't sleep, but, you know, nothing's going on. And, you know, uh, uh, you know, good physicians uh, pick up the possibility that this, this may be uh, derived from a, from a mental condition, it might be depression, because depression is one of those chameleon-like uh, conditions where, you know, especially in men, it can really manifest as physical outward symptoms. And um, you know, you know, until if you're not if you're not open to the notion that it, you know the, the source could be a depression, uh, you do a lot of uh, uh, needless workup, and nothing you know nothing comes 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 of it. And, and so the family physician is is able to treat uh, a large component of this. You right. said, right. what's their armamentarium, and and when does it go from? Treated at the family physician level to up to you, right? So um, you know, usually the kind of sort of the bread and butter treatment for for depression these days are anti or the uh, you know uh, two dozen or so uh, approved antidepressant medications. Um, you know, it, typically um, these medications uh, take several weeks to work, uh, and so uh, 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 physicians are always you know. Uh, educating patients that, um, 
you know, you need to stick with it. You won't feel better right away, but hopefully in, you know, three, four, five, six weeks, you'll start to see a, a shift. Uh, not all of them work uh, 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 initially, and sometimes you have to, we have to uh, change to a, a second medication. Uh, psychotherapy still is uh, uh, very effective. We tend not to use the, you know, the psychotherapy that a lot of people uh, uh, think about, you know, the lying on the, on the uh, couch and talking about uh, your, your childhood and your mother. Yeah. It's much more of a distinct and discreet kind of therapy where, where, where trained therapists are doing like cognitive behavioral therapy or interpersonal therapy. They have a, they have a, a time limit, you know, a, a very uh, uh, deliberate, you know, uh, agenda, and they, you know, they wrap up in 12 weeks or so. So both these can be good, and, and together they can be even better. And, uh, you know, a fair amount of uh, patients will, you know, will just respond to that and, 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 uh, and, and go on their way. Uh, but, but unfortunately... So uh, Many don't. Uh, so one of the things that we have recognized, I think, probably over the last uh, decade, 15 years, is the, uh, the limitations of the antidepressant medications. There's been some really great studies coming out of them. One of them was called, uh, had an acronym called named STAR-D that was out of the National Institute of Mental Health that actually look at when somebody comes and is newly diagnosed and has started on an antidepressant medication, uh, what is the typical course? And if they don't respond, and they're, they're, they're switched to another one, you know, what happens? And, and, and it was a little bit um, shocking and disheartening for those of us in the field because it turned out that there was a, a, a big uh, chunk of people um, who do not respond even to multiple medications. Uh, the, the data suggests that uh, about 30%, 30 or Present to 33 percent of patients will will get a good response to the initial uh, antidepressant medication, but uh, that leaves uh, two thirds Two-thirds. of patients who either get a partial response or no response. And then you know uh, another third of those will respond to switching to a medication or adding a second medication, and then it goes down very quickly. So as you can see, that there's a, there, that means given given the high prevalence of depression, which we didn't haven't talked about, it's a uh, you know one in five Americans experience. Uh, depression sometime in their life, and it's a growing phenomenon worldwide. Given the large prevalence and the fact that a big chunk of people will not get adequate, uh, you know, uh, relief Response, from right? medication or therapy, there's a there's a big need for other things. Um, I'm just picturing someone who is uh, has depression, and then the medicine doesn't help them. I mean, that's got to be. Work. I mean, it's got to make you feel great. Now the medicine doesn't even help me. What, you know. It's true. Uh, uh, it's, it, the double-edged sword of, of treatments is that um, uh, if they don't work, it can it, it, it can make you feel more hopeless. Yes. Um, so we always uh, prepare patients uh, that just because your first antidepressant medication doesn't work doesn't mean you know that it, it won't. That it, there won't be a medication for you to work. But there's uh, some new stuff on on the horizon. Um, there's a, a drug ketamine that's been repurposed. Right. Uh, when I when I was preparing for the show. I I learned something that, that, that I, I didn't know before. Right. Uh, tell us about ketamine. Yeah, well, ketamine is really uh, a, 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 a very exciting uh, development in our field, and, and sort of an exception to the to the bad news I was telling you about with regards to the antidepressant medications. It's a uh, it's a medication that's been around for a, an awful long time since the, the approved in the in the 60s. Used as, as you know every day in in, in medical centers like ours. Uh, you know, uh, as an anesthetic, uh, it's used. Used uh, uh, for treating pain, but it was discovered um, not too long ago that at much lower doses, it had a remarkable ability to, um, uh, you know, basically eliminate depression in people who have not responded. Those the, the, that group of people who I was uh, alluding to, who been through the, the regular conventional medications and therapy, and it does it very quickly. So uh, we're. Uh, and does that feel magical to you a little? It does because you know uh, I've been in this field for a long time, and uh, one of the things that we are not used to having uh, some, uh, something or being able to say to a patient, if this works, you know, you're going to feel better in 24 hours. <laughs> it's just not part of our vocabulary. And here, um, the, you know, we we can start saying that. Now there is there it is a uh, it is it is a little bit of a. Uh, you know, uh, uh, tantalizing. It's a very exciting in one way, but there, 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 there is because yeah, you start saying, "Why not just do that to everybody exactly. as a right. first-line treatment?" Right. right. So the, the there is a, there are some Achilles' heels to it. One of them is that uh, that that the treatments uh, don't tend not to, to last very long. So patients can get a wonderful and fast response. Not everyone does, but a large person. But even then, it may only last for a day. So, oh, and then it tails off. And then for some people, it may last for five days. So there's you know, and you know, but but it's but it's 
and, but, but, but generally, it, uh, the, the, the effect of a single you know, ketamine uh, treatment, whether it's intravenous or intramuscular, because um, we tend, tend not to give it by, by, by the oral route because it's not as effective, um, you know, is a matter of days to weeks. So, so uh, the, the, we're, uh, the field is now uh, uh, trying to sort out how we can uh, extended yeah, duration, yeah. because then it would really uh, manifest the potential of this drug. However, having said that, I have um, patients who have uh, really not responded to anything and are getting ketamine treatments on a maintenance basis for anywhere from uh, every two weeks to every six weeks, and it, you know it's it's changed their life. It's allowed them to live a full you know life depression free as long as they get the booster shots on a regular basis. Yeah, and and you can imagine the future science behind that, looking at. Combining that with other things, exactly. so, you know, what, does that break the cycle and allow psychotherapy and or these other drugs to Correct. take effect, et cetera, et cetera? Right. There's a lot of work still to be done. There's a lot of work, still, and one of the exciting things is that 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 the ketamine works through a, a a chemical signal in the brain that's completely distinct from all the ones that uh, we have uh, uh, been pursuing with our antidepressants. So it's really, you know, um, uh, a standalone, uh, you know, Separate. mechanism that, and that tells us that there that that there's a whole new uh, you know, potential science here to exploit and develop drugs based on ketamine's mechanism that might have solved some of the problems like the, the short duration. So we talked about um, non-drug therapy, psychotherapy, uh, drug therapy. There's new drug therapy. But there's something cool in science fiction-y that we have to yeah. talk about. It's just, yeah. I mean, I, 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 frankly, again, it's something I knew nothing about before we started talking about the show. And I have to make sure I say it right. Transcranial magnetic stimulation. Right. TMS. TMS. Um, and uh, I wrote science fiction in my own notes here. You know? <laughs> so, so you got to walk with I mean, you know, is this something that, 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 that's starting? I don't know what it is. And well, it, right now it's ready for prime time because it's FDA approved. And we are treating people every day with it with a lot of great success. But at the same time, uh, it, you know, it's it's a, 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 a rapidly uh, progressing field. So we, we we can sense that we're at the beginning of this uh, uh, era of a new approach to, the, to treatment. It really is a new approach, David. You Let's know, explain let's what that approach is. Okay, right. So. Uh, you know, uh, you know, psychotherapy was probably the first tool that uh, psychiatry used um, to treat depression, and we understood that we were changing the brain by talking to people, uh, and and uh, a, a skilled therapist could change their brain state and and, and uh, alleviate the depression. Uh, starting uh, in the 60s, it was discovered that certain drugs that were not developed as antidepressants, because nobody kind of imagined that drugs could. You know, treat uh, a mental state at that time, uh, were discovered to have these uh, remarkable mood elevating uh, properties. And that made, uh, I, 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 that made doctors and scientists understand that, you know, uh, there's a chemical part to uh, depression. And so for the last, uh, you know, half century, that's what we've been doing, pursuing medications that uh, you know, can can do what psychotherapy did much faster, more convenient. You know, in our in our in our uh, you know um, modern world, we like uh, pills to fix things, and so so pills became very seductive, and uh, they they work for many people, and they've been a big revolution in terms of, of helping many people. But as we mentioned, there's a lot of people who don't get uh, benefits, and we kind of hit a wall. Aside from ketamine, which is kind of a sort of a, um, it's offbeat, a, sort offbeat. Of, yeah. uh, you know, antidepressants have hit a wall. We realize that we really haven't progressed beyond those first ones very much. There are there are less side effects to them, but in terms of the efficacy, they haven't really advanced. And um, it's been based on this notion that if drugs work, there must be a chemical imbalance. And I'm sure you've heard that term. Yeah. The truth is, the dirty, uh, the little uh, uh, unknown secret. dirty secret uh, uh, in, in uh, neuroscience and psychiatry is that the last 50 years, uh, we've been looking for that uh, chemical balance. It's, it's really not that uh, uh, apparent that there really is a, a, a something that we can see. So the medications you know, do work through modifying uh, the chemistry, but, but it, there isn't like a, a glare uh, deficiency of certain chemicals or so forth. Um, so now, that, and then somebody comes up with them. Yeah. Well, well, somebody said, well, you know, the brain primarily, yes, it uses chemicals, but it uses chemicals to facilitate the primary 
function of the of the brain and the brain cells and that is you know firing they fire they have actually have an electrical impulse and they talk to each other we have you know we have uh, you know 40 billion uh, uh, brain cells uh, making you know billions and billions in, uh, of connections with others and everything that you see and feel and uh, everything you remember um, and uh, everything you can you imagine the future is all a function of the firing of those uh, the, uh, of those uh, brain cells in a certain uh, complex pattern and so ultimately, uh, electrical firing in these cells is what, uh, what makes normal brain function and also what makes uh, you know, abnormal states like uh, depression and schizophrenia and, uh, and many other things. I don't know why, but some ways this brings me back to you know, the, the horrible things that, that may have been done in the past where they would use electroshock therapy. Right. And uh, they, they were horrible, but they, but they worked we, for some people. And we still do that. We still use them. And the reason we use them is because it really works. It's, it's set, like a reboot. It, right? it's, I mean, a, it's like a reboot. It's, it's, it, it resets the electrical firing of the brain. And if you're uh, in a very, very bad state of electrical firing, which is producing a lot of you know, bad symptoms, uh, more often than not, uh, you know, uh, a reboot, just like with your computer, you know, will fix the problem even without but specifically you, you're doing that it. to the whole brain. You're doing that. So it's very crude. It's 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 not uh, it's not very targeted, and TMS takes that to a much more sophisticated and less invasive level. And the idea behind it is, well, we have learned, you know, over the uh, you know the last few decades with advances in imaging that that every brain abnormality is associated with an abnormal firing in certain areas of the brain. You know, some areas, some diseases have increased firing in certain areas and decrease in others, and it's a different pattern for each one. And the idea is, well, you know, rather than trying to, uh, you know, indirectly, uh, uh, you know, correct that through, you know, dropping a chemical in your stomach that goes to in, uh, everyone in your blood, affects all your organs, affects all of your brain, just to target one area and hopefully make that change, why not directly normalize the firing uh, in that area based on what, uh, how we know it's perturbed? And uh, there is this, uh, f this physical uh, uh, principle called Faraday's uh, law, uh, discovered uh, uh, by uh, uh, Michael Faraday in, you know, in the 19th century, that you, know, if, uh, you can induce electrical activity in anything that conducts electricity using a pulsed magnet. And some, uh, some you know, smart people said, well, let, maybe, we can, maybe we can do this to the benefit of patients with brain diseases. And after a little bit of development, it became very clear that this was a viable thing. And by 2008, um, it advanced to the point where uh, you know, uh, a manufacturer was able to you know, develop a, a, a system that uh, demonstrated to the FDA safety and efficacy for depression. They chose depression because in depression, um, there is a lot of uh, very compelling evidence that there is, uh, there is a, one area in particular on the left side uh, of the brain, towards the frontal area, that tends to be underactive in depression and seems to be causally related to those symptoms. And you could selectively stimulate that Exactly. Area. So the idea was to you know, place uh, you know, uh, a, a, a coil targeted at that area and uh, to uh, activate it with high frequency pulses. And the idea, and we know, we know when we do that over time, and unfortunately it, 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 this, like the antidepressants, not like ketamine, does take time, but, but we, we, we're getting at the underlying circuits, and over time those circuits actually start to fire on their own uh, with greater activity. Um, so, so you're reinforcing the connections. Right, right. And exactly, it, it there are cellular more. changes and- So and unlike they, ketamine, it not only does it take a long time, it's durable. Right, so it's almost, it's it almost a mirror profile of it. You know, the, the, the irony of it is ketamine tends to work very quickly but not last very so long. You're giving somebody ketamine for a few weeks or months while you're doing the transcranial stimulation. That's one of the things yeah. that we are doing now, using that as the initial, ketamine as the initial, uh, you know, boost to, to get them out, but the, but the TMS as the, uh, the definitive treatment yeah. to get them well. It makes sense. It, do, it, it, see, it makes sense. Doesn't mean it'll work, but well, it makes it, sense. No, it is working, and, and, oh, and, and, uh, and, we're, and we're seeing people who have not, e even people who've gone to ECT, which was considered, you know, the the the, the most effective treatment, uh, even though it's fraught with a lot of, you know, side effects, so people really wanted to avoid it. See, uh, see, David, until uh, uh, t uh, TMS came out. Um, you know, we had a big gap. People would do the conventional things, and when they didn't work, the next big jump. step was ECT, which, which was really a big, uh, a big jump. Uh, you know, people have uh, 
Uh, you know, it means going under under the anesthetic. You know, uh, you know, six to fifteen times. You know, we basically induce a seizure uh, uh, to patients, and, they, and there's a lot of recovery in terms of you know short-term memory loss until the brain yeah. kind of backs. They don't like it. You don't like it, but it was needed. It was needed. You know, and it was and it, and it, it was and it is life-saving uh, to people. And 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 you know, it has bad. It has you know it, you know it, it has a bad rep. Uh, but but we all, we kept doing it because we kept it in in, in psychiatry because it works and yes. it saves people's lives. But 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 I, we're developing uh, uh, we're developing treatments and TMS is really the most advanced uh, example of a larger field called neuromodulation or neurostimulation, stimulating the brain directly. But the interesting thing is that we can um, we can actually increase activity in the brain or decrease it by, you know, depending on the frequency you use. So if you, there's, there's some diseases are associated with uh, 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 too much activity in areas. So if we, if we make the, um, if we make the uh, uh, cells fire at a low frequency, um, over time, they will calm so, down so on their own. I know that you've been studying this and you do research into it and um, for you, it's been an evolution, a lot of hard work that you see. One of the things I probably, both of us have learned over time, things take longer long than we time. think. Yes. And so, you know, you have to be, you have to go for the long game. And, uh, and, and I've watched the field and, 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 you know, try to, you know, help push it along. And, and, and finally, you know, uh, it's here. And it's wonderful because we have patients coming in every day and we have people, you know, changing people's lives. I, you know, look, d does it work all the time? No. But what, what, here's, here's the amazing thing about this. This is technology. And so I mentioned that in 2008 there was, uh, a, you know, uh, the first FDA approved TMS device, which is very historical, uh, and it was good. Uh, it, it had its limitations. Uh, about two years ago, a second generation device was, was, de Our was developed. Our phones have gotten better, right? Exactly. I mean, so and this one it goes deeper, and we're getting better effects, less side effects. And so, and I know uh, because I work with a lot of the the, uh, the uh, researchers and companies. There's more in the pipeline, so we're going to get devices that are more targeted, can go deeper, less invasive, and we'll be at Star Trek at some point. You know, we'll 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 converge to that to that fantasy at some point. Hopefully, not in the uh, to to distant see, future. To see an expert like you, to see this now is is just exciting, and I'm glad that you are out there continuing the, the, the battle, continuing to make it better. But I think the message to people out there right now is one of hope. Absolutely. Um, we're going to have you back again. <laughs> hey, yeah, hopefully because, not uh, in 20 years. No, we're not going to uh, wait as long this time yeah, because be the, the, the outcome <laughs> is so important to people out there suffering, truly suffering, to think that there are options now out there. So thank you so much for Thanks, spending David. some time with us talking about Appreciate it. it. Um, I, I've been talking to Dr. David Feifel, and, and if you couldn't tell, this is an unbelievable thing that's going on right now. There are advances happening that are uh, probably equal or greater than any advances we've seen in medicine. When you start talking about paradigm shift, we went from uh, you know, talking to people to giving them some medications and now uh, direct brain stimulation in the areas that, that need it. These are, are giant leaps and changes. And it only comes from the hard work of scientists like Dr. Feifel, who you heard here today. That's the way it works. It, it doesn't happen instantly. It's a long, drawn-out process of really good science to get to where we are today. And remember, knowledge is power. That's why we're here on Health Matters. See you again next time.